My name is Kaylee, and I guess it's safe to say that we've all seen the new BBC series Human taking over the internet by storm in the last few weeks. And the first episode of this series started in Morocco and the origins of our own human species. You know, us modern humans, Homo sapiens. And almost exactly three years ago, I made a video on these oldest Homo sapiens fossils that were discovered in Morocco and date back to 300,000 years ago. But it's come to my attention that not everyone is able to watch the new BBC series Human yet. So people like me, here in the Netherlands for instance, but also people in the United States, are not yet able to watch this enigmatic new documentary series presented by Ella El Shamai. So I've decided to make an updated version of my three-year-old video on the oldest Homo sapiens fossils ever found so far, that were discovered at Jebel Irut in Morocco. So for a very long time, it was thought that our species of Homo sapiens originated in East Africa, because the previously oldest Homo sapiens fossils were discovered in Ethiopia. But our species' origin story comes from North Africa, and to be exact, the country of Morocco. So in a way, that makes all of us a little Moroccan, and I personally find that a beautiful thing. In the midwest of the country of Morocco is a city located called Safi. And 50 kilometers or 30-ish miles, if you will, east of this city is an archaeological site named Jebel Irut in the Arabic language. But in the standard Moroccan Berber language, this archaeological site is known as Adrar in Ighut. And this archaeological site is a remnant of a karst cave, which is a cave created from soluble limestone over time. I've explained in a couple videos in the past that limestone is a partially soluble rock that erodes over time. And limestone caves are the most frequent occurring type because of this. So Jebel Yirut is located at an elevation of 562 meters, which equates to roughly 1844 feet, and is located on the eastern side of a karstic outcrop of limestone. Back in the 1960s, this area was mined heavily for the mineral barite, and this archaeological site was discovered when people were trying to mine barite, but accidentally stumbled upon something of way more importance, the origin story of our own species. One of the miners found a skull in the wall of the cave, and apparently he gave it to an engineer who kept it as a souvenir for a while. But he later gave the skull to the University of Rabat to be studied, which then led to a joint French-Moroccan expedition led by anthropologist Emile Enucci to do more excavations and research into the Jebel Irut archaeological site. Unfortunately, this was the 1960s, and archaeologists back then worked a whole lot differently than archaeologists do nowadays. Because back then, it was normal to just, you know, blow up archaeological sites with low-level explosives. Yeah, you heard that right, low-level explosives. Which means that quite some archaeological evidence may have been destroyed during those blasts. Which is exactly why archaeological excavations nowadays are done in a least invasive way, trying not to ruin or destroy anything, meticulous excavations that take way longer and therefore are way more expensive. But because we aren't just blowing up archaeological sites all willy-nilly, we find way more artifacts and clues that could reveal more of the ancient world to us. And therefore it's absolutely worth it. So yeah, Enuchi and his team blew up the top of uh, the Jebel Irut archaeological site to get to the skulls and everything and get to the uh, artifacts. But that's just my mini rant on archaeological work from the past that was focused on finding big breaking discoveries and not focused on trying to complete the puzzle of our past. So yeah, Emili Nucci and his team of researchers in the early 1960s blew up the top of the archaeological site of Jebel Irut and uh, discovered a skull, a partial skull, and a mandible that belonged to a child. And during later excavations between 1967 and 1969, led by Jacques Tixier, researchers uncovered 1,267 objects, including skulls, a humerus, and a hip bone. And even later excavations in the 1990s and 2004 unearthed numerous animal remains, and this helped the researchers to understand the wildlife in this area during the time when these humans lived here. This wildlife 
was vastly different than modern day. It showed that this area used to be a steppe-like landscape with horses and antelopes and buffaloes, gazelles, rhinos, and a lot more. So as you can imagine, when the researchers first came across the fossilized human remains, they were under the assumption that these remains belonged to Homo neanderthalensis, or in other words, Neanderthals. But after they thoroughly inspected the bones and conducted more research, they actually came to the conclusion that these remains belong to the earliest Homo sapiens ever discovered. And now, nearly 60 years later, these are still the oldest fossilized Homo sapiens remains that we have ever discovered on this planet. And it shows that the origins of our species lie in the northwest of the African continent and not in the east. And until we discover older fossils of Homo sapiens, this will remain our origin story. But as you can imagine, there are unfortunately some anthropologists and archaeologists that do not believe that these remains belong to Homo sapiens. And they base this on the fact that these remains have archaic features. And therefore, they don't want to accept that these fossilized remains belong to our own species of modern humans. Because in their mind, archaic humans and modern humans don't match up. But what these people fail to realize is that our own species, of course, had to have some archaic features after we first emerged, because we didn't emerge as looking exactly like we do now, because our own species has continued to evolve as time has gone by in the last 300,000 years. We didn't have blue eyes and white skin as our species first emerged 300,000 years ago here in Morocco, because those are very modern mutations that have occurred in our species some 10,000 years ago for the first time. So it's only been about 10,000 years that we have like blue eyes or white skin and all that fun jazz. And the skulls that they have discovered here at Jebel Irut are reminiscent of the Floresbad skull, which is a skull that has been discovered at the Floresbad site in South Africa in 1932. This skull belongs to either a very late Homo heidelbergensis individual or a very early Homo sapiens individual. A definitive conclusion has never been made until the Jebel Irut fossils were dated by the Max Planck Institute and have been attributed to belong to the earliest Homo sapiens. And because of the Jebel Irut fossils, the Floresbad skull was perceived as most likely Homo sapiens, as it makes it more plausible for such old fossils to belong to our own lineage of humans, you know, the start of modern humans. And the Floresbad skull was discovered with many tools from the Middle Stone Age, which started approximately 280,000 years ago. But, you know, back to the Jebel Irut fossils. They were discovered with tools nearby as well, and alongside these tools were gazelle bones and lumps of charcoal. The charcoal lumps, in combination with the discovered bones, suggest that the individuals living in this cave most likely created fire and cooked the meat. The gazelle bones did indeed show telltale signs of butchery and cooking. Many cut marks were found on the bones, as well as notches that are consistent with the extraction of marrow, and lots of charring on the bones. So it seems like some tools have been burned, and this most likely occurred when the tools were discarded and no longer used, and fires were then lit on top of them. Which, you know, can happen. Sad tool. The researchers were very pleased with this. You might wonder why they would be pleased with burned tools, but this enabled them to use thermoluminescence dating to figure out when the burning occurred, and therefore they could discover the age of the fossilized remains of both the humans and the animals that have been discovered in the cave in the same deposit layer. So the Max Planck Institute in Leipzig, Germany, dated the tools in 2017, by the use of thermoluminescence dating, and they concluded that the burning of the tools date back to 315,000 years ago. This means that the fossilized remains discovered in the same deposit layer in the cave are of a similar age. This conclusion was then confirmed after recalculating the age of the mandible that was discovered earlier. This recalculation produced an estimate age range of between 280,000 and 350,000 years ago. However, there are some anthropologists that are afraid that the dates for the Jebel Irut III mandible won't hold up as time goes by. But if this does hold up, it would be the oldest ever discovered fossil and therefore example of a Homo sapiens. The discovery of the Homo sapiens fossils at Jebel Irut suggests that Homo sapiens did not emerge from East Africa like it was long believed, but that they were most likely emerging 
along the entire length of Africa at least 100,000 years earlier and not contained in one location. It's even possible that the earliest Homo sapiens interbred with numerous species around 330,000 years ago. This would have most likely happened on a continental scale instead, which sounds a lot more likely than our species emerging in only one confined corner of the continent. Of course, as you can imagine, attempts to extract DNA from these fossils have all been unsuccessful. It's nearly impossible to extract DNA from fossils that are this old, especially in the climate of the African continent. It's too hot, too humid, and these fossils probably weren't buried fast enough after the individuals died, so the DNA has decayed. And as you can imagine, this doesn't help the classification of these fossils. Like I mentioned earlier, there are anthropologists that have doubts about these fossils belonging to the earliest Homo sapiens, and therefore the question on the classification remains. Although I feel like as time has gone by, more and more anthropologists deem it likely that these fossils are indeed the oldest ever discovered Homo sapiens. So let's take a quick look at the morphology of the Jebeli root fossils, because there are some differences between the fossils that we found and us living in modern times, and I feel like it's important to mention them. So the main difference between us modern Homo sapiens and the Jebeli root Homo sapiens fossils is the elongated brain case of the Jebeli root fossils. If they are indeed Homo sapiens fossils, it would indicate that the brain shape and possibly even the brain functions have evolved within the Homo sapiens lineage in the past 300,000 years, which is relatively recently, but also to be expected when compared to the evolutionary changes that we have seen in other now extinct human species. The evolutionary changes in the shape and size of the brain are associated with the genetic changes, but also with brain organization, interconnection, and even development. And it may even reflect some adaptive changes in the way the brain functions as well. These changes may have caused the brain to evolve more rounder with two regions in the posterior of the brain to become enlarged during thousands of years of evolution. Another difference between us modern Homo sapiens and the Jebeli root fossils is the fact that the brow ridge of the Jebeli root fossils is still very thick and thus archaic looking compared to our faces nowadays. And the teeth of the Jebeli root individuals developed in a similar fashion as us modern Homo sapiens, although the teeth roots developed faster than us modern humans and slower than apes and other hominin fossils. And the crowns of the teeth took a longer time to develop when compared to us modern humans as well, it seems. So when we look at all the evidence, it seems that all signs point to the fossils at Jebeli Root in Morocco as the oldest discovered Homo sapiens fossils, with some archaic features, which isn't strange when you think about the fact that they must have lived close to the very first emergence of Homo sapiens in the human evolutionary tree. And I personally hope that we will discover more fossils of Homo sapiens dating this far back into the historic timeline, because it would help us in our understanding more about the earliest individuals of our own species. And so my question to you is, what do you think of the Homo sapiens fossils discovered here at Jebeli Rut in Morocco? Do you think they are Homo sapiens or do you feel like they're not? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed watching, then don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you'd like to see more of these kind of videos, and click that bell icon if you want to be notified whenever I upload. If you haven't seen my previous videos yet, then click the card in the upper right corner or click one of the links in the description down below or click a video in the end card. I would also like to say a massive thank you to my patrons and my channel members. Thank you so much for supporting me. And when all of you are watching this, I will be in Malta with my boyfriend and uh, we will be enjoying the sun and we will visit some temples and uh, enjoy our time away from the Netherlands where it's currently rainy and gloomy and weird and sometimes sunny, but also way too humid and hot. So uh, yeah, dry heat in the Mediterranean, much better. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.